When 22-year-old Charles Darwin walked up the gangway of the Beagle to embark on the epic voyage that was to cement his future as one of the most celebrated scientists of all time, few would have predicted he would amount to anything of the sort. Charles Darwin was a daydreamer, slacker and constant source of frustration to his eminent physician father, who had wanted him to pursue a career in medicine, enrolling him at the University of Edinburgh, arguably the best medical faculty in the world at the time. But young Darwin found lectures tedious and surgery class distressing, so he neglected his studies to the point of almost being expelled. His father, exasperated and having lowered all his expectations, now enrolled him into a theological college to hopefully qualify as a country parson, the easiest and cushiest career a gentleman could possibly score. Darwin had made a few friends during his skylarking university days and was particularly drawn to outdoor activities that included assisting in the field studies of marine zoologist Professor Robert Grant, as well as the renowned biologist and geologist John S. Henslow, who was to become a professor at Cambridge University. Darwin had just graduated as a novice priest and was apparently not looking forward to the prospect of a quiet country parish life, taking confessions and giving sermons, and despite not being particularly keen on geology, was desperately keen on taking the long trip abroad to escape England and the dull future that was in store for him. Henslow wrote to Darwin, Captain F wants a man, I understand, more as a companion than a mere collector, and would not take anyone, however good a naturalist, who was not recommended to him likewise as a gentleman. He reassured Darwin to not worry about his lack of experience or ability as a naturalist, being sure, as a fellow Anglican priest, that the opportunity and experience would do him the world of good. He then wrote to Fitzroy, advising that he had found him an ideal candidate. However, Darwin's unimpressed father torpedoed the idea as soon as he found out, Darwin then writing to Henslow to advise him he couldn't go. It was then that Darwin's uncle, Josiah Wedgwood, heir of the immense porcelain empire, hearing of Charles' disappointment, pressured Darwin Sr. to change his mind, only for them to find out that Fitzroy had already settled on another candidate. Darwin made his way to London anyway and stopped in to see Fitzroy to pay his respects and learned that Fitzroy had just received a message that the other taker had to pull out at the last minute. The position once again being vacant, Fitzroy nevertheless had serious reservations that Darwin's Whig political affiliations would make for too many disagreements and incompatibility over such a long trip. Fitzroy having himself just run an unsuccessful campaign for Parliament as a Tory candidate. But he nevertheless invited Darwin to dinner, and the two of them got on so well that Fitzroy, himself only 26 years old, yet taciturn, highly experienced and a respected mariner and intellectual, offered the wet-behind-the-ears Darwin the position straight up, despite their contrasting personalities. 